Well, good morning. Here we are. And I am not where you are. And I'm not where I normally am, as you can tell by the background. We are actually in Greeley, Colorado, and we are here for a marriage conference that will start late this evening and go through all day Saturday, and then we will head back on Sunday for Dallas. Why am I doing this video while my poor wife is trying to sleep here in the same hotel? Because I made a commitment. I made a commitment that I would do this video, that I would continue to do this video, that I would do it consistently, and that I would do it at the same time, whenever possible. So I know I'm a couple of minutes late for what it would normally be, but it's an hour early <laughs> for me to be up, to be ready, to be as fresh as possible. Um, and in case you didn't notice, if you weren't watching our Facebook feed yesterday, uh, we left Dallas about 10 o'clock and with construction delays and road delays, and we allowed Siri to pick the fastest way, um, which probably if it was, you know, as the crow flies kind of fastest way, meaning if we were a crow, it would have been the fastest way. But instead we got what Karen and I like to affectionately call the Dairy Queen run, meaning every little town along the way that's big enough to have a Dairy Queen usually is big enough to have a police force and usually is big enough to have at least one or two uh, schools, like an elementary school and a middle school, as opposed to everybody in one building, which means they have speed limit signs that are much lower than the regular highway signs. So there were places, especially cruising through Texas, where the posted highway speed limit was 75 miles an hour. But several little towns that we call Dairy Queen towns, Dairy Queen run, would be a 75 mile an hour sign and then a 60, then a 50, then a 45, then a 30, all within about 50 yards of each other. So you're basically slamming on your brakes as you come into this town. The whole highway shuts down. And of course, many of those are two lane roads. So the only other thing on the road is farm tractors and semi trucks and trailers. And guess how long it takes them to get from 30 miles an hour where you Basically, for a mile, a mile and a half, you're rolling about 30 miles an hour. You could probably get out and run alongside the car and keep up. And then you ran very slowly back up to 75 miles an hour. And you'll drive for maybe 15 or 20 miles and then ah, there's another one. And so it really wasn't cruising down the highway on that particular stretch of road, which was only 13 hours long. And seriously, once we got into Colorado, we thought, oh yeah, we're out of Texas, we're out of those dairy grounds. No, the route that Siri took us was Highway 287, uh, US 287, which basically runs from our home in Cedar Hill all the way to where we are in Greeley, Colorado. And along the way, it was about this much interstate, which means about this much full speed, no stops, no stop signs, no Dairy Queen runs. And then add to that lunch and dinner because we were on the road for almost 14 hours from the time we left till the time we got here. That drive was quite a commitment. I used to have a boss who would say, and he still says it, he's just not my employer at this moment. And his phrase is, no matter what it is that you have planned, expect that it's gonna take longer than you had planned for. And expect that it's gonna cost more than you had planned for. So when you put those two things together, whatever you have planned, it's gonna take longer and cost more than you ever planned for. That's not just true of road trips. It's true of regular projects that you might start. It's true of investing in whether it's real estate or the stock market or a, a project at work or a project at home, building a fence, building a deck, any one of those things. We don't want to start a project until we count the cost, right? That's what blueprints are for. That's what budget forecasts are for to have an idea going into it, how long is it gonna take? What are we gonna to have to invest? 
Who else has to be involved? But if we have the history proves necessary presumption that there's a really good chance that it's going to take longer and cost more than you plan for, then ideally, when you figure out the little kinks, when you find the shortcuts that are not shortcutting the process, but they're easier ways to get things done, then you'll have a little money and a little time left over. But when you plan only for exactly what you intend, chances are you're going to get to the end and you're going to run out of time and you're going to run out of money to finish the project. But see, that's not just true about time and money with projects. It's true about emotional investment. It's true about our relationships. It's a, true about the commitments that we make. When we make a commitment to be in a relationship, when we make a commitment to be a part of someone's life, what it takes to be a part of someone's life actually requires more time and costs us more. Maybe not financially. Maybe we're not doling out the cash. If you've ever raised daughters, you know that it's going to take longer and it's going to cost more than you planned. And that's both a relationship investment and cost and a financial investment and cost. But sometimes in our relationships, father-son relationships, co-worker relationships, it takes longer to build the relationship than we thought. And it cost us more, maybe from our emotional um, piggy bank, maybe more of those tokens of favor and, and grace and patience and patience and patience and more grace and a little mercy. Sometimes those relationships cost more to pull them off, to actually survive through the tough times of the relationship. And as we grow older, we predict those a little better, only because we've had more experience with ourselves and with other people. Let me ask you though, is there any chance that you're the friend that people feel like they could build a relationship with and yet you make it more difficult on them? If you, through some quirk of your personality or some expectation that you put on others, some drama that you bring to the table, it takes longer for people to build up trust. It takes longer for people to, to invest in you and see a return. It's going to cost them more because they're dealing with you than dealing with anybody else. We, we all know um, emotional vampires, right? We all know people who suck up your time. They suck up your relational energy. Anytime you're around them, you just feel that pull that they're going to suck you into their vortex and it's not going to be comfortable there. That You don't want to open a conversation with them if you don't have an hour to finish it with. Are you that person? Is there a chance that you're the long road trip in someone's day that isn't going to be done when they thought it was going to be done? Are you the person that's going to suck up their time and suck up their energy and suck up their resources? Are you the one creating the delay of time and delay of cost? And Is it you? See, we've got to be able to realize that as human beings, with our own frailties and our own mistakes and our own inability to cope sometimes, we will be the one who just doesn't get it. I, I remember being a kid in class all the time that would raise my hand. I'm like, I, can, you, can you say that one more time? Can you, can you say it a little different way? Because I wanted to make sure I knew everything there was to know about that subject. Now, sometimes that really frustrated the people in my class because they're like, dude, we got it enough to pass the test. We've memorized the answer. Let's move on. I'm like, but I don't just want to memorize the answer. I want to know why that works. And so I was the one <laughs> causing the delay. I was the one making it take longer. I was the one causing people to invest more of their emotional energy, more of their intellectual energy in digging into the question deeper. 
Is that you now? Do you do that to your spouse, perhaps? Do you do that to your children? Do you, do you find that your children don't have time to talk to you because when they sit down, they always feel like they're going to get a lecture? My children accuse me of that. Imagine that. I talk a lot, if you hadn't noticed that. Are, are you the one that you feel like you're guiding or instructing or advising, and what it really means is you're not listening? I, I've been accused of that, and sometimes I'm guilty of that. Probably more than I'm willing to admit are the times that I sit down and talk to someone, and I do more of the talking than I do the listening. That's a flaw. That's not a good thing. Now, when you're when you're teaching from the front of the room, when you're when you're leading the charge, I hope you got enough to say that it fills the time and it and it delivers something of value that adds value to people. But in a conversation, that's why we have two ears and one mouth. We should do more listening than talking. Most people walk away from a, a conversation where they've done the majority of the talking feeling like they had a great conversation. And as leaders, especially as parents, we would do well. And I'm working to be better at spending more time listening in those engagements than talking. How about you? See, none of us want to be the one who causes the relationship, the project, the road trip, to take longer and cost more than planned. There are some things that we can do, like asking ourselves those tough, tough questions. Am I the one talking too much and not listening enough? Am I the one being the emotional vortex that just kind of sucks people into my own personal drama rather than listening and caring about theirs? Am I the one who always demands more of people that people want to give or expected to give? If those are some of the questions that you're asking yourself and you're finding that maybe I am the one that always answers that question with 10 more questions or always answers what time is it with how to make a watch. Guilty. Will you take some time today and just ask yourself about the relationships that you're invested in and the people who have invested in you and ask yourself honestly, is there a chance, even if it's a slim chance, that I'm the drama king or the drama queen, that I'm the one delaying the journey of life and making the journey cost more emotionally, financially, relationally than it has to. You will do well to answer those questions for yourself and serve the people around you by listening more and helping them get on their journey faster with less investment. I'm Jay Lauren Norris, and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.